So we are up to Chelek Gimel, continuing with the third part of the Sefer. We are now up to Perik Hamishi, the fifth Perik, continuing on the topic of Nevua, of prophecy. This is Behevdel Kohanavim Mimosha Rabbeinu Lavashon. The discrepancy from all other prophets and Moshe Rabbeinu. So let's take a look at what the Ramchal has to say about this. The levels of prophecy in a general sense can be divided into two. One level is the prophecy of all prophets, excluding Moshe Rabbeinu. The second level, Madrigas Moshe Rabbeinu Levashalom, the level of Moshe Rabbeinu. The Kodesh Baruch Hu Be'atzmo Chilkam Bechilugzeh. We find that Hashem Himself um, divides them with this distinction. Be'er Hevdeilam, and He explains their uh, their difference. Kakasuv, as it's written, Imyen Nviacha Nviachem Hashem B'Mari Love Ezvado. Excuse me. The if they were if they would be Nevi'im, then Hashem would appear. One second. Im Yihia Nevi'achem Hashem b'Mari Loves Vado Vacholu Lo Chen Avdi Moshe. This is not so with my servant Moshe. Um, one second. Yeah, if there will be a prophet among you, I, I, Hashem, will make myself known to him in a vision. Not so with my prophet Moshe. Okay. So that so that's just, you see there clearly, Hashem is saying, Lo avdi Moshe, my servant Moshe is different than all other prophets. Okay, let's continue. So what are these two levels? What's what's the difference between these two levels? Klal Khanavim Khutzmi Moshe. The general rule of all prophets, with the exception of Moshe, Nubuasamay de Mar'o Vachalum. Their prophecy comes through an image, through a vision, or through a dream. Kosha Kasuv, as the Pasik says, the Mar Elov is Vada, through a vision um, to him I make it known. The Khalom Adaber Ba Bo. Through a dream, I speak to him. Bahainu, what does this mean? Shakarish Baruchu Mishamish Minachalom Hafakuk Kfar Betivam Shabani Adam. Hashem uses the idea of a dream, which is already set into human nature. Vios Lahemle Mtsuyi to function as a medium, Maham Shikh Al Yado Hanavu al Navi, in order to bring about through that means. The prophecy to the prophet. This is not to say that prophecy and dreams are the same type. But rather, a dream is something that has been determined, has been deemed fitting according to Hashem's wisdom as an appropriate means to bring down a prophecy. So the, our sages um, of blessed memory, they said a dream is 1 60th of a prophecy. What do they mean when they say that? They only said that all that they meant by that was that there is some type of uh, teaching and some type of knowledge. Uh, on a higher level than the knowledge that we're used to as people, according to our regular um, intellect. As we mentioned previously, that dreams uh, operate on a different level than regular human intellect. They um, deal with a different, uh, you know, a different interaction with the brain. Um, so, so it sounds that the, as though the Ramchal is saying, 
that the, the communication with prophecy happens through means of a dream, but it's not the same thing as dreaming, uh, you know, while you're in bed at night. It's just that um, part of the brain, that way of that form of communication is, uh, is what is utilized by the prophet. Um, let's continue. Avihine, his gaber shevan of Wallanavi, when the the, the, the the flow of the prophecy becomes very strong for the prophet. Yitzmar goshoyis of chukav vechushav. He leaves his his um, senses and his regular feelings. Mishtake kamu v'shina, and he sinks deeply into something similar to a deep sleep. His thoughts, however, remain active, like the thoughts of someone who is sleeping, the cholim, and someone who is dreaming. And that is when the prophecy is come, comes to him. So that's another parallel between dreams and prophecy, um, at least for standard prophecy, that we'll, as we'll call it. And that is that the prophet has to kind of leave his, his regular cognitive state. So it is possible for the prophet to have this experience while he's awake. As we've mentioned. It's also possible that when he's sleeping in his bed at night, uh, and dreaming, that's when the prophecy will come. But regardless of whether the prophecy comes when the prophet is awake or asleep, which the Ramchal saying are both options, either way, it will not come unless he's having that somewhat outer body experience where he kind of loses touch with his senses and become sunken into that slumber. So he's awake, it could, it's possible for him to be awake and to still have some degree of a, of a deep slumber. Amnam, however, it's possible for this to happen over, for a very short period of time and then to very quickly return to the way he was before. So even though when we deal with sleeping at night, typically a deep sleep is not something that, you know, comes suddenly and goes suddenly, but in the, in the form of a prophecy that, that is indeed the case. When it comes time for his prophecy, he leaves his senses and he um, sinks into this deep slumber for a moment until he receives his prophecy. So that is point number one that the Ramchal makes about a standard prophecy, which he's clearly building up to contrast with Moshe Rabbeinu. Okay, let's move on to paragraph number four, Dalit. The Omnum Yosem Shalnevim Eina Kimi Shiroz Chaveo Lefanov. The, the vision that a prophet sees can, is not similar to someone who sees his friend, that type of vision. But rather like someone who sees him through a lens, through a, through a pane of glass. And not just through one lens or one pane of glass, but like someone who's looking at someone through many layers. The image is being transferred from one to the other. But what he, what's being seen is certain is definitely one thing. And its movements can be seen through those lenses even though uh, the vision is not reaching him directly. 
Um, so that is So that's a very, very interesting description of a prophecy that the Navi is not, not getting a direct vision, but rather it's similar to um, when you, uh, the vision being passed from one lens to the next until it arrives all the way to the Navi. Velo od, not only this, Elish Enri Yalsam, Elik Nishiro, Mitochas Bakalaya, built him Mitsuchtachas. In addition, it's like looking through a lens which is not perfectly clear. It's impossible for him to see the vision with perfect clarity. So too with the prophet, um, the prophet's vision of Hashem's, Hashem's kavod, Hashem's honor, it's also not a perfectly clear vision. I feel the call it ha teki. One moment. Despite this, however, what the prophet sees is actually Hashem's glory. And he is aware of this without any doubt, doubt whatsoever. So it's an interesting um, dichotomy here. That on the one hand, on the one hand, the Ramchal is telling us that the Navi does not get a very clear vision. And the Navi, it's uh, comparable to the vision being passed through many different lenses. And the lenses are not even clear. However, nonetheless, the Ramchal writes, what they're seeing is Hashem's, a vision of Hashem, Hashem's honor, as he describes it. And even if the image is not perfectly clear, but it is clear to them what they are seeing, meaning it's clear to them that they're seeing an image coming from Hashem, they're seeing Hashem's glory, and that they have no doubt about it whatsoever. So that's an interesting... Um, point that he adds, which, you know, is going back to something that he discussed earlier in earlier chapters. Also, in this regard, uh, there are many different levels from one prophet to the next. You can have where one's vision is clearer than the others. Umasik and he uh, grasps it with greater clarity. The ulam, however, hanavi hamasig kolze masig yinyan laamita. The the prophet that is grasping all of this, he's getting it um, uh, in truth, meaning. Meaning to say, regardless of the level of the prophet, the level of the prophet will only affect the clarity of the message. But the truth of the message and the now the knowledge that the message from Hashem, that remains consistent for every level of prophecy. It's perfectly clear to him that regardless of if the, if the vision is clear, but it's very clear to him that whatever it is that's being revealed to him and being um, whatever knowledge is being made known to him is coming from Hashem. Okay, so just as we mentioned in the third parak, he's it's with it's he's totally clear that the message he's getting is coming from Hashem. Okay, beautiful. So just as the images that are being no, made known and revealed to the prophet are coming through 
many refractions, like many transfers from one to the other, so to any knowledge that's reaching him, it's in a similar vein coming through uh, riddles and parables. Through dreams. That is the means through which the prophecy reaches him. As we mentioned previously. So that's a similar, that, so that's a fascinating idea, a fascinating um, parallel, I should say, that just as the images are, I wouldn't say distorted, but the images have um, a lack of clarity in that they are kind of bouncing from one, one lens to the other, and not every lens is perfectly clear, so to the messages, which would be words, as we mentioned previously, the messages also are coming through um, with a certain lack of clarity, and that is in the form of, of riddles and, and metaphors, meaning it's not a straight message, it's a riddle, it's a metaphor, and through that the Navi is supposed to understand um, what the message is. I mean, it, it seems to me that in the uh, in the Nevi'im that we're familiar with, in, in any case, in the Nevi'im and Tanakh, even when they have riddles, they get explained at some points that you know what they're talking about. There's not a lot of controversy of what are, what are they really talking about. Whereas when um, Moshe Rabbeinu in some places says things, they don't know whether they're talking about something here in present or the war of Gog and Gog or something. There are all sorts of layers on it. That is a fascinating observation. I mean, oh. you know, what you see there, well, I see a boiling pot. Okay. You know, and, and he explains that everything's explained eventually. There really isn't a lot of um, doubt what the message is, at least in the Nevi'im that we have uh, preserved in the Tanakh, what, what the problem is, as opposed to what's going on in Tehillim or even what's going on in the, in the Chumash sometimes. The Chumash, right. Yeah. So, um, so I hear what you're saying as, um, as a initial, the initial reaction to what you're saying is that it's a kasha, it's a, a challenge to the Ramchal, that if anything, on the contrary, what we have from the other prophets, the later prophets, is one message, whereas um, Moshe Rabbeinu's prophecy, i.e. the Torah, Moshe Rabbeinu's prophecy, i.e. the Torah, has many different interpretations. So my, my response is that the, what we have from the other Nevi'im is their understanding of the message that they received. So it's true that we don't have different, we well, don't some, have- Some explains it to them. It's like a tunnel vision. Right, exactly. Um, exactly. But what I'm trying to say is that um, the fact that we don't find dispute over the prophecy of the, of the, of the prophets of Tanakh is not necessarily a proof that their, the message they got was crystal clear, but that no one else got the message. So there, we only have one person interpreting it. That's the only interpretation that we get. Now with Moshe Rabbeinu, the prophet, what, what I would argue there is, is that the prophecy itself was crystal clear because the prophecy itself was just the words, the words of the Torah. And there's no disputing about what the words are. How to interpret those words was something that a Kodesh Baruch Hu, um, intentionally left uh, to Torah Shabbat Peh. But, um, but I, I don't know if I would, I don't think that the fact that we find Maflokas and the Gemara and Drushas and extrapolations and interpretations of the Psukim, I don't think that, that, that that's indicative. I, I wouldn't interpret that as varying interpretations of the Nevua itself. Because the Nevua itself is, you know, um, 
שמע יזור השם אלוקינו השם אחורה, ואוהבת עשה השם אלוקיך. The psukim, the words, are the, are the prophecy, um, not all the meanings of the words. That, that's what I would argue. Um, so let's, so let's, let's continue. So far, so let's just, now that Amchal is going to move on to, to his contrast and discuss the Nevu of Moshe Rabbeinu. So just to recap, standard prophecy, the points that the Ramchal highlighted are that the transmission is in a dreamlike vision. It's where the prophet is totally unconscious, totally loses touch with his senses. And it's also um, a image which is being transmitted from one lens to another, a sort of tunnel vision, as you put it, uh, Dr. Horowitz, and also not even through clear lenses. Um, and likewise, when it's a prophecy of words, it's in riddle or in metaphor. There, there's, no, there's no doubt of the, sor- the origin, the source of the prophecy, but what exactly the message is that is what's unclear. Okay, continues the The prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu is on a higher level than all of this. Vuhu, and it is the Rishona, the, as the, the following points. Firstly, he doesn't um, he does not have to leave his senses. Um, and he doesn't have to experience a dream at all. The prophecy comes to him when he remains in his totally regular, consistent state. So that's point number one. Moshe Rabbeinu, he gets a nevua while he's going about his business. He doesn't, there's no, um, he doesn't go to some level of, of unconsciousness and lose touch with his senses. This is what the Pesach says, pel pel da berbo. Mouth to mouth, I speak with him. That's what that means. That I talk to him the way I talk with, the way a person, two people talk. He doesn't, it's not through the form of communication of a dream where he is unconscious. And it's like looking through only one lens. And that one lens is crystal clear. So that's contrast number two, that Moshe Avedu's vision is not through many clouded lenses, it's through one perfectly clear lens. The, the concepts, the knowledge comes to him through clarity. Not through riddles. That's what the Pasuk means when Hashem describes his nevuah to Moshe Rabbeinu as vision and not with riddles. I just want to point out again, these psukim that the Ramchal keeps on citing are just a couple of words in the few, few psukim where a Kaddish Baruch Hu responds to Tzipora and to Arun, who spoke uh, some sort of Lashon Hara, that they questioned Moshe Rabbeinu, um, and a Kaddish Baruch Hu gets very upset at them, and he tells them, you Tzipora and you Arun Akohen, you're making a grave mistake. You're both prophets, and you're therefore assuming that what you experience is what Moshe Rabbeinu experiences. And based on that assumption, you're judging Moshe Rabbeinu. Says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you're both terribly wrong. Moshe Rabbeinu's nevuah is entirely different than yours. So that's, the, in those psukim, the nuances of those psukim the Ramchal is, is elaborating on to explain how each one is referring to one of these different concepts that he uh, is developing. Um, it is not being revealed to him, Hashem's glory, to the extent that it's able to be revealed, that he's able to receive it. 
מצטייר בתוך המערה. Rather, it's like someone whose image is being formed in a, in a mirror. Because otherwise it would be impossible for a human, for a person to, uh, to grasp his creator. So it's not, even Moshe Rabbeinu, it's still um, like looking at a reflection in a mirror. It's clear it's only one, uh, one refraction. It's not a tunnel vision. But it's not, it's still, even with Moshe Rabbeinu, it's not literally face to face. Because that's something that a human being is not capable of. It's in a way, he's able to get the image completely and with clarity. Like someone who's looking it through a very clear lens, which has no, um, Nothing limiting the vision. And regarding this, it says, the, the image of Hashem he saw. He also had Sirah Mitztayr Shuha Tmuna, that image that was formed, which is the Tmuna, the image of Hashem, that he would see very well. So a, a Tmuna, a picture, he would see a picture of Hashem. Which is not the case with other prophets. Even that, they were not able to, to see well. Um, from the image that they could grasp, they would get a very tremendous um, um, haskala, uh, I don't know, uh, idea, concept, uh, intelligence. No, no, he's talking about Moshe Rabbeinu, excuse me. From that sewer, from that image that he would, he would be able to grasp, that he would be able to, to receive, he had a far greater and clearer knowledge and intelligence more so than any other prophet, um, as we've mentioned. Um, okay, so here the Ramchal is touching on all the points that he mentioned previously and stating that Moshe Rabbeinu is not that way. Number one, the image is not in the form of a dream. It's not while the person, the prophet is, is unconscious, but rather Moshe Rabbeinu's prophecy was when he was totally conscious, totally regular, if you will. Um, and second, um, secondly, the image was not through a series of lenses and a series of refractions and a bouncing back and forth and back and forth until it arrives at the prophet um, and through lenses that are clouded, but rather only one lens and perfectly clear. But the Ramchal still makes that point that even Moshe Rabbeinu is not getting a direct look at a Kodesh Baruch Hu, it's a picture. It's a it is a reflection, but a single reflection with a perfectly clear lens. That's the difference. And it has a profound difference in the nature of the information, in the, the nature of what he's able to grasp, what he's able to understand um, because of that additional clarity. Um, okay. The Ramchal has more to say about this, this, uh, the, this divide between Moshe Rabbeinu and the other prophets. And of course, it's going to have bearings on how to understand, um, how to appreciate the Torah uh, that we have, as opposed to other prophecies. Um, and we will continue with that next week in Mirza Hashem. Okay, thank you all for joining. I apologize again that I was a little delayed on the start of this evening. And I wish you all a, a wonderful night.